today is Monday, June 5th, 2017. My name is Ann Peskin, and it is my honor and privilege to interview Gary Klein for the Jewish Historical Society of Fairfield County. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Peskin. Uh, please tell us your name. My name is Gary Klein. And when and where were you born? I was born at Stanford Hospital. Uh, January 25th, 1967. Which makes you how old? 50 years old. Tell us a little bit about your grandparents. My, gra my grandparents uh, all lived in Stanford. The Kleins were Jack and Lil Klein. They owned a newspaper delivery business on the east side. They lived in the Cove area on Park Street. And um, my other grandparents were the Shabelsons. Um, they were in the food business, the family food business and they lived on um, Strawberry Hill for a while, and then on Blueberry Drive, sort of in the Westover neighborhood. Were they born here? Uh, my, my maternal grandmother, I believe, was born in Stanford, or may have been in New York for a short period of time, but she's the most, the most Stanford of all four. Uh, the, my, my maternal grandfather was born in New York. My other grandparents were born in, uh, I believe, in far countries, one in Hungary, one in Russia, perhaps. Tell us a little bit about your parents. My parents are still alive here in 2017. Um, my dad, Mort Klein, who served on the planning board for a number of years in Stanford, uh, he worked in the food business in an offshoot of my mother's family's business for many, many years, and then ultimately worked for the city for, I think, 15 years toward the end of his career in the operations department. My mother is a ubiquitous Stanford Public School teacher. She is, continues to substitute teach many years after retiring. She worked at Springdale School for three years, uh, then worked at Davenport Ridge for at least 32, 33 years. Uh, there's always an interesting story about my mother, which is she worked at Springdale School prior to the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and when she was pregnant, although she was married, they terminated her as soon as she was showing because uh, it was considered immoral for women to be pregnant while they were teaching. And she saved that letter, which is actually might be a nice thing for the for your organization to get a hold of. It's, it's a letter which says you're, you're terminated because you're pregnant, which if you can believe it, uh, how different the world was in the early 60s. And they were both born in, in Stanford? Both born in Stanford and both attended Stanford High School. You mentioned how some of the family was involved in politics, but I think your mother was also into uh, community service. My mother uh, ran for the board of reps and lost to Michael Pavia, yeah. who eventually became the mayor. Uh, my dad ran for board of reps, and, and I don't remember who he lost to somebody as well, because the way that things worked in the uh, until uh, Ellen Kamhai uh, retired from her post, if Ellen asked you to do something and uh, and even if it was a suicide mission, even if you were going to lose, uh, it was hard to say no to Ellen, so they, they both ran. My mom did some community activities, but my mom worked, um, other than for a short period of time from, say, 61 to 69, uh, she worked full time. So she, she did a few things here and there, but uh, was very busy with work. What was the t dinner table conversation? Uh, it was it was mostly about what we were up to, what the kids were up to, sports events, uh, activities we were involved in, a little bit about business, my father's business, a little about politics, but not not too much. Where did you go to college? I went to the University of Virginia. I graduated in 1988, and I'm happy to say my daughter is a student there as well. Nice. And did your education affect your political views at all? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, I, I think that the I think that growing up in Stanford and going to a school like Stanford High School probably impacted my political views more than attending the University of Virginia. The University of Virginia is a very, um, at least when I attended, was uh, not nearly as diverse as uh, Stanford High School. Uh, it was a very, um, uh, in, in in many ways, it was a very monolithic. Culture. I loved it. I loved the, the South and the people there, but it was very different from, from going to Stanford High School. Uh, did you have any um, political activity in Stanford High School? 
I was the president of the freshman class and the sophomore class, and I ran for the senior class and I lost. So I had some involvement, yes. Who were your political heroes wow. growing up? Um, I always liked Al Gore, even back when he was a senator in Tennessee. Uh, I remember enjoying the person who became Vice President Biden, Senator Biden. I remember enjoying their the um, Senate Judiciary Committee, um, Robert Bork uh, confirmation or non-confirmation <laughs> process. I remember Senator Biden was pretty active on that. So I, I, I found them really to be fascinating. Locally, I, I really was a great admirer of Bell and Cam I, uh, as I'm sure a lot of people have to say that, but uh, she was just such an inspiration as a, as a female leader and as a fundraiser and as an organizer and uh, somebody who, who was not afraid to um, stake out her position in a, in a compassionate way. What defines politics to you? Wow, uh, vigorous debate and uh, hopefully public service. When did you decide to get into politics? Well, I don't think it was getting into politics as much as I, I, I felt like we needed to make some, uh, in, to, I, I wanted to make an impact on public education. I had gone to, I graduated from the Stanford Public Schools. Um, I was unhappy with the superintendent that had been hired by the Board of Ed in the early 2000s. Um, I, I very strongly believe that he was engaging in practices that were for his personal career benefit, uh, not his financial benefit, but his, he was trying to make a name for himself as, a, as, as an educator and was taking on some initiatives that, that he, there wasn't a lot of room for debate and discussion. It was really sort of his way or the highway. And so from a philosophical perspective, I didn't think there was enough discussion and, and um, resolution to them. But, but even more significant, if we get away from politics and policy, when he went to implement them, he didn't, uh, as, as Dr. Rao might say, he didn't pilot them, he didn't test them. It was just, we're doing it this way, even if we don't have the funding or, or have not thought through the process. And I was really um, motivated to try to, to, try to um, uh, impact that. So who, how did you get into politics to actually run? Uh, well, I spoke with, there, there was a group of parents who were very concerned about the way the superintendent was doing things. Um, and we all sort of talked about different ways we can impact. We were advocates. Um, and uh, several of us decided we would run for the Board of Education. Um, John Lydon was one. Jeff Alsmeyer was another. I was another. Um, we just decided we were going to do that. And back at, at that point, uh, Ellen had just left. Ellen Kama had just retired as the party chair. And I spoke with Jim Diamond, who was the party chair at that point. Through the city committee process, and there we go. Who was the superintendent? That, that was Josh Starr. Well, you ran something different just recently. I'm sure he did. <laughs> he, 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 he was a uh, very smart, he still is a very smart guy, um, very articulate guy, and he had a particular vision that um, there were lots of people who agreed with many of his things, and there were a lot of people who didn't agree with anything. I, I always got along with Dr. Starr. He was a very he, he would meet with you, one of the interesting things, he'd meet with you, whether you liked him or didn't like him, you'd pick up the phone, he'd take your call, he'd sit down with you, and I know you'd been through some superintendents that did not behave that way. He was, he was very good about meeting with anybody, but I, I just didn't agree with some of the things he was doing. What party do you belong to and why? Um, Democrat, always have been. Um, why? I, I think it's really the social, the social issues that, that uh, bring me to the Democratic Party. I, I really support their national views on social issues. Now, you held the office uh, in the Board of Ed. What years were that? 2011 to 2014. You only had one term. I completed one term. Yeah, I, I did, did the whole term. I didn't leave early, but, uh, but I didn't run for another term. Any reason? That was one of my questions, particularly. Right. Well, why didn't I run for another yeah. term? It, the, the time impact uh, on your family and on your work is is really um, uh, you're, you're never prepared for it. It's if if you're going to do the job right and you're going to engage and read everything and really participate and not just show up and raise your hand, 
the time is um, a terrible impact on, on your work and your family. And I'm a, I'm a trial lawyer, so there I don't have a lot of control over my schedule, and um, it was very hard to juggle all those. I, I was interested as to why. Can you tell the story about anybody that acted as your mentors? Yes. As my mentors? Did you have any? Uh, well, I have a lot professionally. I have a lot of colleagues that I'm close to, judges and lawyers, but uh, you mean politically? Or? Politically. Yeah, I, I mean, politically in Stanford, it was really on. You know, LK, I really just, you know, it was so uh, from, you know, I used to lick envelopes when I was a little kid for, right. for that was, that was if you wanted a tuna fish sandwich at Ellen's house, uh, you had to lick envelopes uh, or stuff envelopes. Uh, and so she really, she was really inspirational that way. And where did you get your supporters from? Well, as I alluded to before, there was really a sort of a groundswell among parents um, who, who were not happy with some of the things that were going on in the schools. And so that was sort of an instant group of supporters, many of whom I, I didn't know before the concerns developed over what was going on in school. Um, I also had a lot of family support and and, uh, and support from local local political people. What were some of the obstacles you faced in running? And yeah, so there, I'd say the biggest obstacle was the Democratic City Committee had just turned over uh, where Ellen had retired, Jim Diamond had taken over the chair uh, as the chair, and there were lots of members of the committee that believed that anybody that was tied to sort of the old guard, Ellen's, Ellen Kamhai's group, just shouldn't be running for office any longer. And I didn't have any, I had been on the city committee back in the early 90s, so I knew some of the folks, but uh, it, there was a newer group of people that, that didn't, weren't interested in having uh, people who they believed as Ellen's guy on, on, on the uh, running for elected office. So it was, it was a close, the voting in the city committee was very close for me to be able to um, to get the endorsement. I, I got it. I didn't have to run a primary, but it, I think I won within. I got it maybe one or two more votes than than I needed. Did you have to speak to all the different city committee members? I, yeah, I tried to get a hold of all the different city committee members. I was um, uh, there was some controversy. I don't remember specifically. Maybe your prior interview he remembered, but the the nominating committee reported me out positively. I don't recall with who else, but then there were people on the committee that really didn't, weren't interested in accepting the report of the nominating committee. So um, I think I spoke to as many people that would take my call. And then there was a, there was a, um, there was an unorthodox proceeding because what happened was uh, one of the members of the city committee asked if each of the candidates could speak and that had not been the tradition. So we each had to get up and say a little something on the spot in front of the committee. So that was a little bit of antics, but it, it, it all went fine. How did you feel about campaigning? Uh, I love talking to people uh, and hearing their views, even people who didn't agree with me. Um, I did a big reach out to the Latino community. Uh, I interviewed, I, I was interviewed by the Latino newspaper uh, in Stanford, which has a very, very wide circulation. Um, I did a big reach out to the African American committee, uh, community through some friends of mine. That was a lot of fun and interesting. And just talking to parents and talking to stakeholders, union members, uh, the newspaper. Uh, I like doing that. I did not like attending ceremonial events just for the sake of attending. Uh, there were a lot of camp people campaigning who say I have to march in some parade or do this, and I, to me. That was just not a good use of, of, of one's time to try to educate people about your views. It's really just waving, uh, and I, I, didn't, I didn't care for the, the ceremony. How about the debates? I, I really enjoyed the debates. I think we did three. I think we did one at Government Center, one at a library, the Turner River Library, and then one down at Yearwood. Uh, I thought they were a lot of fun. Um, they would, they're not really debates. It's really the answer questions. Right. True. Um, did you raise money, and how much? Raised a lot of money. Um, I think we I think we raised almost twenty thousand dollars, if you can believe it. Um, we had a lot left over, uh, which I donated. Um, 
well, I, I ultimately gave it to a political action committee, which ultimately donated it to um, different um, parent-teacher organizations with the money we had left over. Uh, but uh, it was easy to raise money. People were really nice and really generous about uh, donating. It's part of being from a... That's nice. Living here my whole life. Yeah, well, you've been in involved with it a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's no fun to ask people for money, right? I didn't like asking them for money, but it wasn't hard because people, I got a lot of calls saying, you know, how, how, what's the maximum? How do I give you money? What was the issue that was so much debated between in, in a four-year election? There, there, were, there were several. Um, there, there, were, there were several sort of big issues. Um, uh, by the time I ran for election, Dr. Starr had already left. He had already resigned. Um, so really the big issue was who's the next superintendent going to be? And um, uh, there was a lot of discussion about the type of person that we wanted, whether we should do a national search or just look internally. Um, that, that was probably the biggest issue because, um, again, Dr. Starr had already left. Um, the, what did he want that you didn't? The, the big issue that he was focused on was the elimination of uh, ability grouping mm -hmm. in, in classrooms and in, um, in uh, middle school. He was even discussing it at the high school level, the elimination of um, having classes where children are um, taught in, in such a way as to push them to rise to the next level, but nonetheless, they're, they're, they're the classrooms are are associated with particular ability levels. Um, he was of the view that by by having children grouped in different levels, you were engaging in um, a process that kept um, kids that were at the lower levels were going to stay there, kids at the higher levels were going to stay there. And he was he was I think rightfully concerned. I think that's a very fair thing to to be concerned about. I was very concerned about that. I think it's a very fair thing, but. Um, our view, my view, along with, you know, I don't know, the 10,000 people who voted for me, I think I was the biggest vote getter that year of everybody. Um, our view was that the, the process should be to get all kids to achieve higher, everybody. And if, if a kid is um, <coughs> starting at a lower level, the goal is not to keep them at the low level. The goal is to push that child to get to the next level. Um, and the view was that if you put the kids of all levels in one classroom with one teacher, it's, it's humanly impossible for a teacher to um, teach to all kids at the highest level all the time. Um, it was as simple as that. And there were very successful models in Stanford, particularly at Westover, also at Rogers, where they were grouping from kindergarten on, uh, which kindergarten might be a little much, but they were grouping from kindergarten up, and those were consistently the highest performing schools in Stanford for all kids, for all kids, uh, no matter what neighborhood they came from or background. And Dr. Starr was of the view that he didn't care that having ability grouping meant uh, treating kids who were underperforming unfairly. And I remember saying to him, teachers need to be trained not to do that. You shouldn't be treating anybody unfairly, but um, you're really going to disadvantage everybody if you just lump everybody together. That was, that was my view. And it, it, was, it was a heated discussion. It's a national debate. I mean, you probably know in, in your field. Um, it's a big national debate. What, that was one main issue. Were there any other main issues that you were involved with while you were on the board? Oh, while I was on the board. Yeah, uh, of course the budget is an issue every year. Uh, the big issue for me, for me on the board was really the selection of the superintendent, which was a, which was a very um, uh, difficult process. The, the, um, there were people that ran at the same time I ran who said they wanted to see a national search, wanted to have uh, a full analysis done on a national level and then as soon as those people got elected they decided they just wanted to go with the with the acting person to come in as the uh, as the superintendent and um, I had said look we told the we told the voters we're going to do a search we got to do a search and the board was flipping back and forth five to four over that issue over the course of many many months and um, there was a there was a, the board decided to go forward with a search process 
and right in the middle of it before we even got any resumes, um, one board member changed their view and we switched to the decision was made to stop the search and bring in Dr. Hamilton um, as, as the superintendent. I, I had great affection for Dr. Hamilton. I, I really respected her, but I had told voters that we were going to have a national search, and so I was disappointed with that uh, process. I ultimately I voted in favor of Dr. Hamilton, but before I did that, I voted against stopping the search. So it was, it was, it was a lot of time, it was a lot of effort, it was a lot of um, debate. It was, it was challenging. Was there any other area that you were involved in at the board specifically? Uh, I, I was asked by, I think by Dr. Rao, to chair the policy committee, and then by Jeff Allsmeyer uh, to chair the policy committee. I think the feeling was I was a lawyer, so that was a good idea. Uh, the policy committee was very involved in the calendar, which was, to me, a big time distraction. I, I, I would have rather had the professionals figure out the calendar, but we spent a lot of time on the calendar. Uh, we spent some time on things like um, uh, bullying policies, cyber uh, bullying policies, security policy. Um, uh, there were some big, big issues about security because of the Sandy Hook uh, shooting. Um, there were issues about uh, who had the right to review the security cameras. Um, so some really uh, challenging, really sort of national issues that we had to deal with on a local level and had to develop policies for. We looked at absentee policy, we looked at um, field trip policies. Uh, it was interesting. That, that actually was quite interesting. What's your proudest mo moment in your political career? Wow. Um, well, I, I think, putting aside policy, I think political career, I think, I think never having run for office and then running, raising $20,000 and winning a Gigantic amount of votes was really was really fun. My parents were so happy. Uh, my <laughs> wife was happy. My kids were happy. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That was a, that was a challenging year too because the year I ran was it was only board of finance and board of education, uh, and I guess some board of, some of the board of reps. Um, so nobody votes, you know, in that year. There wasn't even a mayor. It wasn't even a mayoral year. It was that it was that really dull year, and I I I, I think I got almost ten thousand votes uh, a year, which was really a lot. Tell me, what was your what was the most regrettable moment in your career? Regrettable meaning something I did that I Either regret. Either you did or, or just you regret happening or whatever you choose. Well, I, I always thought that the um, the way the superintendent search happened, I thought was unfortunate. I, I thought that the I think it's a really fun opportunity for the community when you can. Do a national search, get a lot of community engagement, and winnow it down. Will excuse me, winnow it down to a couple of people, you know, some big national names. This is what they did the most recent time to bring in Dr. Kim, right. and then really weigh the person and debate vigorously. And that's just not what happened. And what ultimately happened was uh, the board just decided, now let's not do a search and let's just pick the person who's here, who again, who I who I had great affection for, and I, I would have loved to have been a candidate among these other candidates. So I, I, I thought it was really unfortunate and it was it was very um, it was very political with a, with a small p. There, there were really people staking out positions and my view was, guys, we're trying to hire superintendents, the most important thing we do. Arguably, it's the only thing we do as a board. Was being Jewish a help or a hindrance in your political career? I, I don't think it mattered at all. I, I don't think in Stanford, um, maybe I'm, maybe I'm uh, too optimistic, but I, I just don't see that as impactful in Stanford. I mean, I, I tried to be, to reach out to any group that would listen to me, so I, I, I didn't think that was really an issue. Your own background uh, in Judaism, do you belong to a temple? We don't belong anymore. Uh, we're, we're, when college tuition came about, we, um, it really, we had to make some choices about what we were going to be paying for, but I, I grew up at Temple Sinai. And both of my kids had their bar mitzvahs at Temple Sinai, um, so I, I'm sort of married to that to that temple, and I'll, I assume we'll be back once the the weight of college tuition stops. It really does take a. Are your children involved in politics today? Uh, my my daughter, I wouldn't call her involved in politics, but she's very interested in the topic. She's taken a lot of public policy courses at UVA. UVA is a very um, it, it, because of who founded it and because of 
I think UVA has, has, has graduated more U.S. Senators than any other university, so it's, it, it, it sort of breeds politics, and if you ever see like Professor Savito on MSNBC or CNN, he's one of the big professors there. So she, she's interested at the, on an intellectual level. My son's very interested in local politics. He's not, he hasn't done anything actively, but he just got appointed to be the editor-in-chief of the Westward over at West Hill High School, which is their big newspaper, which, believe it or not, has a larger circulation than the Stanford Advocate these days. Yeah. Uh, which, and which high school? He goes to West Hill, and they oh. have a beautiful newspaper called the Westward, which um, for always has been a very substantial, very thick <laughs> newspaper. And he's, he's very on top of Stanford politics okay, and um, uh, issues about immigration, and, and uh, he's, he's, uh, he's interested in it. I don't know that he'll run for office. But That's another question. What legacy do you think you left behind? I, th I think that, I won't just say me, but the, the group of us that were uh, sort of got elected around the same time on the board, I think that we really shifted the tone on the board to let's, let's agree to disagree. There, there have been a lot of real neg negative um, politics and, and um, combative personalities on the board. And, and my view was, probably because I've trained as a trial lawyer, we can disagree about stuff, but there's no reason to, to be mean to each other or to, or to call each other names or anything like that. So I, I think uh, that, that there were a group of us that, that really tried to just say, let's, you know, what can we get done here that's for the benefit of the kids and the community? And if we have a disagreement, one side's going to win the argument, one side's going to lose the argument, and then we have to deal with tomorrow. What are we going to do tomorrow? And I think we, I think we were pretty successful at pushing the board. If you if you talk to um, staff or other board members, I think they would say that that um, the board meetings were very productive when we were there. You know, they take a long time, but uh, I, you know, we try to keep it to a, sort of an honest debate. Again, we didn't always agree. I mean, uh, there were a lot of times we disagreed, but but we tried to really keep the the tenor of the meetings very professional. That's with everybody there listening. As much as you can, yeah. Yeah. Well, I thank you very much. My is pleasure. there anything that I haven't asked you that you would like to add? No, I, I think this is a great, uh, the organization doing this is great, and it should be a lot of fun, and uh, I can't wait to see what the tape looks like. Thanks so thank much. Thank you so much. Cool. So pleased to have you. Thank you.